Hi, welcome to the third video of Physics Past Paper Solution. This is Edexcel IAL, Unit 2, January 2018. So let's start. Question number 16. A student used an ohmmeter to measure the resistance of a different lengths of a wire. The student plotted his result on a graph. Explain in terms of conduction electrons why resistance increases with the length of the wire. The thing is, if you have a given length like this, so this length L has some specific resistance R. But if you increase the length, that means the number of atom inside the conductor or the number of lattice signs are increased. So atoms or ions are increased. That means collision or also increase. If collision is increased, so drift velocity is decrease. That means current is decrease. So the resistance is increase. That's how you can see the effect of the length on the resistance. Describe how students should measure the diameter of a wire of the wire as accurately as possible. So the student is going to use a, a screw gauge, micrometer screw gauge to, me, to measure the diameter and he, he or she will be uh, measure the diameter from different places or a different orientation and will take a multiple reading and use the mean in order to get reliable results. So if you see these points are similar, if you are doing some measurement of a diameter of a wire, so we write similar keywords for these kinds of questions. Determine the resistivity of the wire. The cross-sectional area of the wire is 1.3 10 to the power minus 7 meter square. That means we need a graph and this is the graph. So if you see we need to find the resistivity using graph and the formula for resistivity is uh, rho is equal to r a by l and uh, if you see the graph is resistance against the length meaning if you find gradient of the graph then gradient would be equal to r on L. So this is your rise and this is your run length. So this is the length horizontal coordinate. So we choose two points on the on the graph and we find the gradient rise over run and this gradient will be R over L and if you see the formula R over L this is gradient. That means resistivity would be equal to gradient times area and area is given cross-sectional area is given we can use grade uh, this area multiplied by the gradient and uh, how do we find the gradient so we choose uh, two points and these are the two points with these coordinates so 9.6 and point, uh, point 0.96 and 96 and point 0.34 and 4 so if you do your calculation of gradient so your gradient would be equal to y2 minus y1, 9.6 minus 4 divided by x2 minus x1, 0 0.96 minus 0 0.34. Once you do that, your gradient would be equal to 9.03 ohm meter inverse. This is your gradient because r by l, so unit ohm. Per meter and then resistivity equal to gradient times area meaning 
9.03 times area 1.3 10 to the power minus 7 so resistivity is 1.2 10 to the power minus 6 ohm meter Due to a systematic error, the student's graph does not go through the origin, suggests the source of systematic error. What is the meaning? If you go back to the graph, you will find that the, 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 the graph or the straight line is not passing through the origin. Uh, the graph is showing that it has some resistance. So the reason is, uh, there, there is uh, some resistance in a measuring instrument like ohmmeter. Definitely, it, it has some internal resistance or very small resistance. Also, we are using connecting wire. Theoretically, we ignore the resistance of connecting wire, but practically, practically, we have uh, resistance in the connecting wire. That's why the graph is not passing through the origin. Question 17. The refractive index of a drink can be used to determine the percentage of sugar in the drink. The graph shows how the refractive index of a drink varies with the percentage of sugar in the drink. So this is the graph, percentage of sugar and the refractive index of the sugar with the different percentages, uh, different concentration. The drink is poured into a container with a thin uh, perspex walls a laser is used to shine ray of light through the drink the diagram shows the arrangement viewed from above explain how the percentage of sugar in the drink affect the path of the ray as it enters the drink so if concentration concentration is increased that means refractive index of the solution will be increased so refraction or the transmission would increase so it will refract more that means angle of refraction would be smaller or less if you keep increasing the percentage of concentration. So concentration increase, the refractive in index increase, the refraction increase, angle mode refraction. That means uh, angle of refraction is less because it is rarer to denser transmission. The angle of incidence and the angle of refraction of light ray as it passes into the drink are measured. Determine the percentage of sugar in the drink. You can ignore the effect of a light ray passing through the perspex. So angle of incidence 40 and angle of refraction 26 degree. We need to fi find or we need to figure out the percentage of the sugar. So first we find the refractive index. So this is the graph and first of all we need to find the refractive index so refractive index is n is equal to sine of i over sine of r sine i sine r this is uh, rarer to denser from uh, low refractive index to high refractive index that's why sine i over sine r so sine of uh, 40 divided by sine of 60 so n is equal to 1.47 this is the refractive index now it's time to figure out corresponding percentage this is 1.46 and 1 1.46 1 1.47 is somewhere here and then you can find the corresponding value of uh, of the sugar yes so it is around 
72 percent so the concentration corresponding to 1.47 is 72 percent an alternative method to determine the percentage of sugar in the drink is shown as polarized light passes through the drink the plane of polarization rotates by an amount depends on the percentage of sugar in the drink so this is a container a container polarizing filter b light sensor polarizer a and then unpolarized light okay explain what is meant by plane of polarization remember this time they are not asking about polarized light remember don't write polarized light definition polarized light okay they are talking about plane of polarization so the plane along which oscillation can uh, moves or contains the oscillation and the plane that moves along the oscillation so don't say that uh, the definition of polarized and unpolarized light they are asking the plane of polarization so the plane at uh, that contains oscillation and move parallel to the direction of the wave initially there is no drink in the container and polarizing filter are aligned so that no light is detected by the light sensor explain how the alignment of two polarized two polarizing filters a and b ensure that no light is detected so the situation is we have two polarizer filter so you can imagine this is polarizer filter a and this is polarizer filter b so a and b because we we want these alignments that, that uh, in a way that no light is detected this is here we have a detected sensor this is light source so we arrange a and b in a way that when the unpolarized light passes through the filter a it becomes polarized plane polarized and then plane of filter a is perpendicular to the plane of filter b that means when this polarized light reaches at b the the filter b absorbs all the light because the plane of filter b is perpendicular to a so the, no light is detected at the center so they are aligned like if if so you can imagine if a is vertical then b would be horizontal or vice versa the polarizing filters are kept in alignment so no light is detected then the container is filled with the drink and light is detected the light is detected when container is filled explain why the intensity of the light detected is less than the intensity of the light transmitted by polarizing filter so again you can imagine that you have a polarizing filter a and then filter b in between you have some container in which you fill a solution so when a polarized light coming from filter a pass through the solution so some component of this polarized light are rotated are rotated in a way that these rotated light can pass through the filter b so we detect the light on the other side of the filter b but the intensity is less than the intensity that is coming out because not all but some component of the lights are rotated i 
and explain how the angle through which the polarization has been rotated can be determined using these apparatus so the filter B is rotated so again no light is, is detected and the angle of rotation can be determined Eighteen, the aurora borealis northern light and the aurora australis southern light occurs occur when charged particles emitted by sun are deflected by earth's magnetic field as the particles travel through the earth's atmosphere they collide with the atoms in the air uh, resulting in production of streaks of light the photographs shows the streaks of light that can be observed across the sky close the north pole or the south pole explain how light is emitted due to collision between charged particles and the atoms of the gas in the air again it is a typical question it's all about energy level of the atom it's all about energy level of the atom that an atom has discrete energy when something happens, electron jumps from lower to higher level becomes excited and then return to return back to the uh, the ground state and release the photon or the radiation and that's how what happened here so you can start your sentence just not saying the atom consists you say something happened and in this case as the particles travel through the earth atmosphere they collide with the atom due to this collision due to this collision electron of the atom gains energy and then jumps to the higher level and becomes excited and then return to the ground state and then emit radiation in the form of aurora that we observe in the sky 19. The green color commonly observed in an aurora is caused when the charged particle collide with oxygen atoms. The intensity of the green light depends on the number of charged particles and the number of oxygen atoms. Explain why. It is because greater the number of charged particle and the greater number of atoms, so there will be maximum collision. And the maximum collision means maximum number of atoms can uh, will will go to the excited state, and more photons are going to emit. Scientists have observed the light emitted from aurora on other planets. Of course, explain why the observation gives information about the gas. Every atom, every gas atom has a unique energy level and so the emitted light will be different. So knowing the frequency and the wavelength of emitted light, we know or the scientists can estimate the amount of gas, gas or and the type of gas. That's it for this paper. Take care. Have a nice time.